Uber has explored a potential takeover of Expedia. That's according to the Financial Times, at least. Uber's interest is reportedly in the very early stages. No formal approach has been made. No discussions currently taking place. But for more on the potential of what, of what that could look like, let's welcome in Brad Erickson, RBC Capital Markets equity analyst. Brad, it's good to see you. Um, you know, there are a too. lot of sort of connections between Uber and Expedia, including that the Uber CEO used to work at Expedia here from a strategic vantage point, would something like that make sense? Uh, we don't. We don't generally think so. That was that was very subtle <laughs> in terms of yes, he, he's still an observer on the board and or a non non executive on the board. So yes, I you know, the moment he took that job right, and people under which was you know back in whatever seventeen or eighteen, I think people generally understood that Uber was tied to travel. And gosh, wouldn't that be a cool deal at some point? So this is not like something that's totally new that investors haven't thought about before. Um, but I think, uh, you know, what we cited was that Booking did a deal with uh, Grab, um, the the company out of Southeast Asia, back a, a partnership, though not a, not a merger, obviously. And, and really what we found, and I think what Booking has found there, was there actually wasn't as much synergy between uh, the timing of when people book their transport on a trip versus the trip itself, accommodations and stuff. So I think that's kind of instructing our thinking is thinking it's not probably very likely. The other thing, Brad, I saw some call your colleagues on the street saying, you know, when Uber management talks about why they do m a it's to drive growth that's the goal that's the strategy and so they would argue this this if you thought about it like that this acquisition wouldn't make a whole lot of sense by that metric either yeah that's right that's right i think you know the very basic way to say it is when you think about anything that needs help moving around the world from point to point whether that's a good a thing a person what have you that's where Uber wants to be, and I think when they're talking about M and A, that's specifically what they're they're going after. But you know, and again, there's it's been I think several months now since since there were also unconfirmed reports of maybe talking about Instacart, right? Well, look at what happened there. You know, our view has been on that they didn't need to buy Instacart. They certainly partnered to get access to more customers in suburban markets, which they might not have been able to address. Great, certainly addresses the need, but. Again, you don't need to buy that asset in order to achieve that outcome. Brad, um, the word that keeps popping into my head when I read reports like this is super app, which is something that sort of exists in China. It doesn't really exist here. There's been talk about it at various times, whether it's this example or other examples. Does super app make sense in the US app landscape? Um, yes and no. I think certainly two things. One. I think for any company looking to pursue a super app that really goes outside the boundaries of the vertical in which they operate, right? If we considered ride hail and food delivery a vertical and travel as a separate vertical, I think that just gets very, very difficult from a user standpoint. Western smartphone users, whether that's US, uh, North America, or Europe, for example, um, have just not shown as much of an affinity for using an app or a multiple services inside of one app the way that people do in China, for example, with WeChat. Um, so that's one thing. The second thing is just more of a structural issue, which is that in Apple's case, they're pretty, they've been pretty restrictive on allowing app developers to create sort of multiple app, app uh, apps within one app. And so there's also that restriction. So yeah, it just doesn't, just doesn't play very well. So Brad, so you're skeptical about this Uber Expedia deal, but you're not skeptical of Uber itself. You like this name. It has had a nice run, Brad, it's up about you know, roughly 30% this year. What, what drives it higher? What are the catalysts ahead? Yeah, I think it, it, you're right. It has, a, has had a nice run and certainly uh, a week ago, Thursday night with Tesla's RoboTaxi event, that was, a, that was a nice catalyst that the bulls were really happy to get, uh, get out of it. Um, from here, you know, I think the valuation is a little bit fuller up here. With that said, this is a secular growing opportunity with significant operating leverage that's going to drive earnings growth in the order of 35 to 40 percent over the next few years. So you're generating a lot more margin, a lot more cash flow, and you're going to return more capital 
that's a compounder. That's a stock you want to own. That's why we like it. Brad, always great to see you and have you on the show, my friend. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Good to see you guys.